One of the most requested new features in the next Smash game before Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was announced was a way to turn off stage hazards. I'm pretty sure the biggest thing that sparked people's interest in a mode like this was the Wily's Castle stage in Smash 4. Oh look at that, a Mega Man stage! I like Mega Man. Cool looking castle, fun moving platforms, a wall to wall jump off of it. Oh man, what is this? That's right, the main gimmick of this stage is the Yellow Devil. Occasionally he pops up to wreak havoc on players by shooting projectiles and moving to the other side of the stage as little blobs that can hurt you. Much like his boss fight in the original Mega Man. It's a pretty cool reference to that game, seeing as he's basically a one-to-one -one recreation of his fight there. However, basically nobody liked this stage in Smash 4 because of him, which is a shame because it's a really cool looking stage. People call him too much of a distraction from the fight, too big and so on. So people started asking for a way to turn off stage hazards and Nintendo listened by officially adding a stage hazard toggle in the next game. And look, even in the menus they used the yellow devil as an example of what the stage hazard toggle does. However, I feel like they took it a bit too far. Not only does the yellow devil not appear, but the moving platforms now also don't appear, making this stage basically a copy of Final Destination, but with walls. This is the problem I have with the stage hazard toggle. It's completely uncustomizable, and it more often than not takes more away from the stage than I would have liked. It's also just strangely inconsistent. For example, if you play on the Arena Ferox stage, it's locked to one of four transitions of it at random. And if you get the one with moving platforms, they still move. But on Mushroom Kingdom U, the stage is always locked to the same transition, the first one. But then on the Paper Mario stage, it's always locked to the first transition, and the platforms still move. And it's not just transitioning stages that have these issues, by the way. For example, Skyloft. This is a traveling stage, meaning that the stage takes place on a floating platform with smaller platforms. Eventually, it lands on a specific segment off the stage in the background for a few seconds, and then goes to a different part with a different layout of smaller platforms. With stage hazards off, this stage is stationary in this form and never lands, meaning it always looks like this. Delfino Plaza is the exact same thing as Skyloft, a traveling stage that occasionally lands and gets a new layout of smaller platforms. But with stage hazards off, guess what changes? That's right, absolutely nothing. That's so weird. I'm not saying the stage hazard toggle is a massive disappointment. I mean, I love Kalos Pokemon League without stage hazards on, but they could have improved the feature as a whole in my opinion. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm gonna give my ideas as to how they could improve the feature, as well as some specific changes they could make to some stages. Let's talk best case scenario first. Let's say Nintendo contacts me tomorrow asking me to completely overhaul the stage hazard toggle feature myself. What would I change? First off, I would change the option as a whole from a simple toggle it is now, under advanced settings, to something similar to the random stage selection toggle. I would move it under there, outside of the advanced menu, and when you click it, it would open up its own menu, much like the random stage selection menu. From here, if you click a stage, it would open its own additional little menu, allowing you to turn specific hazards on or off per stage. This way, you could have Wily's Castle stage with the moving platforms and without the Yellow Devil. Smashville without the balloons, but with the moving platforms. Pokemon Stadium with only the fire transformation, if you want. You get the idea. And if you've done that, the toggle option will appear under it, allowing you to turn the specific selection you made in the previous menu on or off at any time much like the currently existing stage hazard toggle. And if that's too much work for you, you can simply open the stage hazard menu, click on set none, like in the random stage selection menu, and boom, no hazards at all. If it worked like this, casual players can set any stage to the way they would enjoy it most, and competitive players could have stuff like Fountain of Dreams with the up and down moving platforms, and Pokemon Stadium 2 without the transformations, easily accessible in the same rule set. And that way, everyone is happy. And in my opinion, this could sound like a great marketing gimmick, I mean tagline. Wink wink. Just imagine it. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Fight as over 70 unique characters on your own customly created stage. Or customize one of over 100 already existing stages to your own liking. Allowing for over 300 different combinations. Available now, only on Nintendo Switch. Subscribe to P. Jiggles on YouTube. Sounds good, right? This is the best case scenario, and what will most likely sadly never happen. But if anyone in Nintendo were to see this, feel free to steal my idea, I totally want it mined. 
<coughs> Anyways. A quick side note, this would make getting specific stage transformation footage so much easier. In my last video, Useless Smash Facts 5, I told you guys that the skill that can show up in the PictoChat 2 stage is affected by character weight. Do you know how long I had to sit on that stage in training mode, waiting for that specific drawing to show up? If I could have just turned them all off except that one, it would have saved me so much time. Anyways, since that's so unlikely to happen, I figured I could also give some ideas on how they could tweak the current system, instead of fully changing it. First of all, can the stage hazard toggle please change into an option under the X button or be toggleable right on the stage select screen? I prefer some stages with hazards on and some stages with hazards off, but it's such a pain to have to go all the way back to the rules, sit through the small loading screen, edit the rule set, hit start, hit start again to confirm the rule set name, sit through another small loading screen, and then pick the stage you want. I thought the whole point of being able to save custom rule sets was that you'd never have to edit them after making them. That'd be a nice change they could easily make in a patch, right? Please? Anyways, enough about the feature itself, let's reimagine a few stages with hazards turned off. Because some of the alterations the current hazard toggle makes suck, or could be a bit better. I'm not gonna talk about every single stage, because most of them are perfectly fine as they are now, and also there are a lot of stages. But then again, I also have a lot of ideas I want to list off myself, so I'll try to go through each one relatively quickly. Spring Stadium, the newest Smash stage. I'm sure you've heard this one already, but I really wish the two small ceilings were gone if you turn hazards off. The whole idea behind them is that you can knock opponents against them and then combo that into the spring jump attack, right? Well, what's the point of that if the springs are always deactivated with hazards off? Now the ceilings are just there to stop some vertical chaos and be annoying. Maybe the Jigglypuff main in me is why I hate them. So this stage, Arena Ferox, has four different transformations it can shuffle between, much like Pokemon Stadium. However, unlike Pokemon Stadium, if you play without hazards, the stage gets locked to one of the transformations. Randomly. That's kinda stupid. Let's say you really like this stage layout. That's great, but if you want to play on it, and only it, you get a 1 in 4 chance to get it. Also, if you get this layout, the platforms still move. I think the stage should just be locked at the same one each time with hazards off. Personally, I prefer this one, but that's of course my personal opinion. What is, however, not just my personal opinion is that the yellow devil should be the only thing removed from this stage with hazards off. I'm pretty sure everyone agrees that with the platforms, this would be a really fun and unique stage, but it's ruined by this giant yellow blob. As it is now, it's literally just Final Destination, but with walls, like I already said. Speaking of literally just Final Destination, BAM! Umbra Clock Tower without hazards. To be fair, there's a little downward step in the center, but that's so small I don't think it really matters. I think just leaving one of the platforms that randomly show up in the normal version could go a long way to making the stage more interesting when you turn off hazards. Congo Falls. This isn't about adding a platform like the last one, this is about removing a platform. I know it doesn't really make sense, but I really wish this rock over here was gone with hazards off. This stage layout would be great if it just wasn't there, but as the stage is now, it's way too strong of an option to just get a stock lead and just camp on the rock. Very similar case is with the super happy tree. Look at this. Normally the cuts on the left and right sides disappear if you stand on them long enough. The hazardless version makes it so that they never disappear, which is super stupid because it makes this stage insanely welcoming to camping on the far right cloud. I wish the clouds just didn't appear at all, and that the right blast zone was a little closer to the stage, which isn't too out of the ordinary because if you play on this stage in fixed camera mode, the right cloud is gone and the blast zone is actually closer to the stage. And another very similar case to Congo Falls and Super Happy Tree is Magic Hand. This is one of my favorite looking stages in the game. Can you guess why? It's so pink! Also the new Magic Hand remix slaps. I pick this stage in Battlefield or Omega form all the time, but I would love the hazardless version if they just removed that pesky platform. In the normal version of this stage, when Dungeon Man walks by, that platform just vanishes. And then comes back later. Man, just leave it out entirely with hazards turned off, please. Umbra Clock Tower loses all of the disappearing platforms, and Mementos removes the platform on the right that changes every now and then entirely. 
Since we were talking about moving blast zones with Super Happy Tree, can Hazardless WarioWare Inc. please have blast zones that are a bit further away, please? This stage layout is sick and I really like how this stage looks, but it's ruined by one thing. Yeah, that's a little bit too crazy, isn't it? The competitive scene for this game has three or four big legal stages and way less smaller stages, which encourages some characters to run away more if they have the lead. Having this stage be legal would be a good way to combat that since it's pretty small. But really, the only reason why it's not is... <laughs> Moving on to a stage that'll never be legal, Venom. So without hazards, the Arwings and Wolfen don't appear, as you might expect. However, the stage still tilts a little bit. The only reason I'm pointing this out is because I feel like this is an oversight, maybe? They stopped Lilac Cruz from tilting without hazards on, after all. They likely did this because the ship might have hit the walls of the cave or whatever if it didn't tilt, but I think it would be fine. Either way, I don't really care that much because this stage sucks, so let's move on. Speaking of Lilac Cruz, though, likely to combat the stage clipping through anything without it tilting, it doesn't travel at all like in the normal version. This is fine and all, but it means the funny Star Fox taunt easter egg doesn't work anymore. This is because when you activate the taunt, the dialogue will start as soon as you get to the next area, and since the stage never travels to a new area in the hazardless version, the easter egg also can't start. Just make it so the stage still travels, it's so much prettier that way too. Or just have the easter egg start instantly after the taunt is done, like on Pelotena's temple. Two of them? Remember when I said Delfino Plaza strangely doesn't change at all with hazards turned off? Yeah, why can't it just stay like this the entire match? It would be a pretty unique stage layout after all. Delfino Plaza is one of 11 stages in the game where the hazard toggle changes in nothing, which is really strange because Skyloft functions the exact same as it. But with hazards turned off, it does change. Namely that the stage never moves, and thus never lands, and thus always has this layout. Why can't Delfino Plaza just be the same, just have it never land and never change platform layout? Very simple change. Speaking of those 11 stages that don't change at all with hazards turned off, aside from Delfino Plaza, which I just talked about, there are four more I want to quickly mention. First is Prism Tower. I don't really like this stage, but it's still weird that it doesn't change at all. Just like Delfino Plaza and Skyloft, it's a traveling stage that lands on the stage in the background every now and then, except that the main platform's layout never changes. I think it should just permanently be stuck on one of the parts. I can't really figure out which one though, so I'll leave that up to you. Definitely not the starting area though, because if it was, then this stage would just be a slightly smaller clone of Hazardless Bridge of Elden. Mario Galaxy has a graffiti mechanic. Basically, the shape of the stage is actually like this, but it looks like this. So if you shoot a projectile, it curves along the stage, and if you jump near the left or right side, you will go up and fall back down like this. I think for the version with stage hazards turned off, they could just not have the graffiti mechanic, to just make it a regular stage but with a weird shape. It wouldn't be the best change ever, but I think it's better than nothing. After all, even if they do change the hazardless version of this stage to be like that, it's not like the normal version will become inaccessible. That goes for every stage I talk about in this video by the way. Real quick, can I just say how much of a disappointment this stage is? I know it's a little off topic, but ever since this stage was announced in Smash 4, I thought, wow, what a big missed opportunity for a Mario Galaxy stage. I wish the stage was just the whole planet, obviously not as big, but still with the gravity mechanic at play, so that you could even walk on the sides or upside down. That would have been a way cooler stage than this. Right now it's just a flat long stage with two platforms where some projectiles curve and some randomly don't. Anyways, let's get back on track. Dreamland GB is another sort of traveling stage, it's really in its own class to be honest. Since it doesn't change at all in the hazardless version, I think it should just again be stuck to one of the areas. Not the first one because like that, it would just be another bridge of Elden, just a lot smaller. Personally, I think the boss rush lobby section would work best. I feel like it would give the most unique stage layout that could actually be fun to play on. And the last stage I want to talk about that doesn't change at all with hazards off is the King of Fighters Stadium. I think many people agree that this is one of the best casual stages, and I agree. However, it's a shame that it doesn't change at all with hazards turned off. I wouldn't remove the destroyable walls, because that would just make it yet another Bridge of Elden. But I think making the walls undestroyable could be interesting. That way you can only get KOs from the top blast zone, and you could save yourself with moves that don't send directly up by trying to tech against the wall. For the rest of the stages that don't change at all, I got nothing. 
These are just static stages with no real gimmicks, so let's just move on. I got six or eight more stages to talk about, so let's finish them up real quick. We've been talking about Bridge of Elden clones for a while now, so here's another, Colosseum. Normally this stage has platforms randomly rise from the stage, but with hazards off, those of course don't appear, making this yet another Bridge of Elden. I think it should just be locked to a specific layout, but since the layouts it gets in the normal version seem to be completely determined at random, I wouldn't have a clue which layout would work best. Maybe keep the layout determined by random, since that's the stage's whole gimmick anyways. Kinda like the Super Mario Maker stage. And another stage in a very similar situation to Colosseum is Wrecking Crew. Without hazards, the layout of the platforms is just determined by random again. But I really don't mind, since the randomness is part of the stage's gimmick. Just thought I'd point it out to avoid sounding like a hypocrite. Anyways, Great Plateau Tower. So without hazards, this stage always looks like this. But I wish it always looked like this which is what it looks like after you destroy this ceiling thing. I know it would be kinda similar to Smashville, but I mean it's a little smaller, the platform is higher, and there's a pillar under the stage making it so you can't travel under it, which you can do with Smashville. Yggdrasil, or Yggdrasil, or just Drazil. Yggdrasil Zulta is a stage that I really like without hazards on. I know it doesn't really make sense, but I still wish the takeoff sequence at the start of the match was just skipped with hazards off. But then again, it's not a massive deal, I still really like this stage with hazards off. Halberd is in a similar case, I wish the startup sequence was skipped, but that's not all. At the same time, I wish and also don't wish the landing sequence was skipped with hazards off. I just don't like that while it's landing you can kinda go in the stage for a while, but then again, I like this layout the stage has while it's on the halberd. If only there was some sort of way I could have the best of both worlds. Hmm... Mario Circuit. I just can't wrap my head around this one. In the normal version of this stage, this platform flies around the circuit in the background, you can get hit by the track as it passes by, and there are racers on the track that can also hit you as they race by. With hazards turned off, all it removes are the racers. Why? How does being able to get hit by the stage not count as a hazard? Woohoo Island is a very similar stage. It's a platform that flies around and you can get hit by the terrain, but with hazards off, that one is just the stationary platform in the sky. Why can't Mario Circuit be like that? Anyways, the final stage I want to talk about is a fan favorite, Yoshi's Story. So in the normal version of the stage, there are shy guys that carry food onto the stage, and a cloud that moves in a pattern every 20 seconds. Everyone loves this cloud, he even has a nickname being Randall the Cloud. But sadly, even if you don't have any items turned on, the shy guys will still come in with food. This feels like an oversight since that wasn't the case in Melee. There the shy guys would still fly in, but they wouldn't be holding food. Naturally in Ultimate, if you turn hazards off, the shy guys don't appear at all, but neither does Randall the Cloud. I wish the hazardless version only got rid of the shy guys and not Randall. I know that doesn't make sense, but it's currently impossible to play the stage with the clout and no food items, which is a huge shame. Or they could just fix it and make it just like Melee that if you have items turned off that the shy guys don't hold any food. I don't understand why it's like this anyways. Smashville, Town and City, and Spring Stadium, all three have items fly in, but if you turn items off, then they don't. Yoshi's Story is currently the only stage in the game where if you have items turned off, you can still get items. Anyways, that's all stages I wanted to talk about. Let me know which one was your favorite idea, or if you have any cool ideas of your own, I would love to hear them. But I'm not done yet. I still have a little fun idea. What if some stages with hazards turned off still change a little bit from what they are now, but only aesthetically? For example, normally on the distant planet stage, it sometimes rains, which causes this slant on the left to get slippery, and then you slide off. On the hazardless version, it of course never rains, so that the slant never becomes slippery. Personally, I think it could still rain every now and then, but then that it just doesn't affect the slope at all. Just for an aesthetic thing. Sometimes in Pikmin, it rains after all, and that never affects the area. I wanted to mention a few more of these I have for some stages, but since this video is already pretty long, I'll go past them really quickly. Oh, and by the way, most things I name could also very well work on the Omega or Battlefield form, for instance, on Omega Distant Planet, I think it could still rain every now and then. Anyways, let's get into it. Like I said, I want to cruise past these quickly, so I won't be spending much time on each stage here at all. 
Gamer. Normally some fake outs appear, like a cat peeking through the door, or the TV turning on. I don't really see why those can't happen in the hazardless version. Gerudo Fally. I think Koume and Kotake, the two old witch ladies, could still be seen flying around, but only in the background. Similarly on Garden of Hope, I feel like the stage is a little empty without hazards. Why not let some Pikmin chill on the stage in the background? Maybe they could hide inside stuff or something, similar to the Pikmin 3 credits how they hide in flowers. Duck Hunt. I don't see why the ducks can't still appear. Maybe without the wing flapping sound effect or the background turning red when they fly away, that way it would be clear that you can't hit them. Foresight. I think it would look sick if the UFO that sometimes appears still flies by in the background in front of the moon. Normally on Mute City SNES, other drivers will bump into the Blue Falcon, and then those act as platforms. In the Hazardless version, only the Blue Falcon appears throughout the entire stage. I think it would be cool if you could still see the other vehicles drive in front of Captain Falcon. In the background. That way, it still feels like a race. Hanumbo. Normally little creatures jump out of the water to hit the leaves and make a sound. Depending on where they hit the leaves, the sound effect will be a different pitch. You can hit the leaves to change their angle, so that the creatures will hit them at a different part. Hitting them also changes their color. Sound effects also play when you land on the leaves, even with hazards off. But the leaves never change color, and the creatures never show up, so the stage is just... green. Throughout the entire match. I think it would be neat if the leaves eventually changed color in the hazardless version if you land on them enough times. That way you can also see where most of the fighting has been done. Wouldn't that be cute? Also, I don't understand why the creatures just don't show up at all anymore. Those can stay. Also, did you know that they're called the Hanumbo? Crazy, right? Well, that one took a while, so let's zoom past the last remaining ones from here. I love Hazardless Kalos Pokemon League, but it's a mad shame you don't get to see the other forms the stage takes like this. I think it would be cool if even without hazards, the stage still transitions between all of its forms, but the layout just never changes, and nothing interacts with the stage at all. It would also be a lot cooler to look at in tournaments, wink wink. So without hazards, Garrick Mock Monastery always stays at this spot, the Cathedral, with Rhea, Flane, and Sedeth in the background. I think it would be cool if with hazards off, the three characters that are in the background here are always randomized. So you could for example have Hilda, Petra, and Dudu, which normally never happens. Or even the three house leaders if you're lucky enough. That'd be neat to see. I don't see why Tingle can't appear at all in Great Bay without hazards. I know that he is a stage hazard normally, but if you turn them off, why doesn't he just appear in the background, flying with his balloon? I think it would be pretty funny if he did that, and after a while his balloon pops and he falls in the water. He is very much a comical character after all. I really like the drawings that show up on PictoChat too. However, I don't like that with hazards off, this stage is just white. And basically another final destination, but with weird edges. Normally when a drawing shows up, some parts can be grayed out, and you can't interact with those parts. I think it would be pretty cool if with the hazardless version, some drawings still show up, but fully grayed out, so it's just for the background. The stage actually kind of already does this, but only in the battlefield and omega forms, and not in the hazardless for some reason. And finally, figure 8 circuit. I saved this one for last because I have a pretty good idea for it. So normally there's a jumbotron that shows a map of the track and where the racers currently are. Since the hazardless version removes the racers, the jumbotron screen just looks like this. I think this is kind of boring. Doesn't it get tiring having the same moving repeating pattern in the background for minutes? So what I think would be cool is if it still showed who's in first place, but then based on the fighters. It could be based off of how the placings looked on the touchscreen of Mario Kart DS, since that's where the jumbotron is based on anyways. It could even support up to 8 players, just like Mario Kart DS. I also think it would be cool if it showed what item you were holding, but that might honestly be a bit too much. Anyways, that's all of my ideas. Don't forget to tell me which ones were your favorites. And with that, thanks for watching. I know I've been gone from YouTube for a while, but I just felt like I had to take a little break from it to not get burned out or something like that. And it definitely helped. But I'm back now and I'll try to make videos again at my usual pace, which is still pretty long. For more videos by yours truly, don't forget to subscribe. I want to see if I can hit 300,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so maybe help me out with that. Also, I have a Twitter in case you want to follow me, and I also have a Discord in case you want a chance to chat with me. No pressure though. Thanks again for watching, stay safe, and have a great day. And seriously Nintendo, steal my ideas. Please, I wouldn't mind.